We have just entered Big Bend National Park. Tip number one, this park is in the central time zone. So if you're coming down here from New Mexico, be prepared for your clocks to shift an hour forward. Tip number two, uh, you have to plan very far in advance to camp within the park. We camped in Terlingua, the closest town to the park. And that might actually be better because we were able to go out for some super yummy tacos. <laughs> so it doesn't really feel like we're roughing it. We also have a nice full bathroom with plumbing and a shower, and hot water and everything. So we're liking where we're camping. And now we're here before sunrise to hike the Lost Mine Trail. It is four point something miles. Do you remember, Melissa? 4.8. Great, 4.8 miles. A little bit longer than the hike we did yesterday from Guadalupe to Devil's Hall. But this is really the only significant hike we have planned today. So I think we can handle it. This out. He wants to bite you. Cool. Wow, we've only been hiking for like 15 minutes. This is a highly majestic viewpoint. Look at that. It's definitely worth getting up at 6.30. Which felt like 5.30 because of the time change. We've gone up a bunch of switchbacks. It's been fairly easy going though. I mean, the temperature is great due to the time of year and the time of day that we started. But we're getting higher and it's pretty epic. Wow, this hike turned out to have an amazing payoff. We're at the top now and there's an incredible 360 degree view. Big Bend is already turning out to be easily a like A tier national park. I was telling Melissa that this place is reminding me of the Angels Landing hike in Zion. It's like the Angels Landing of Texas. Pretty incredible views. We were told this is a must do hike when you're here. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we followed that advice. We have come to the northern section of the park to see the fossil discovery exhibit. Let's see if we can see some fossils. Yep, there's fossils, all right. Look at the shell. What is that? A marine this? reptile mosasaur. Cool. That's the big one in Jurassic Water World. Bone. Big old fish. The sign out in front said the fossil record here in Big Bend is one of the most diverse in all of North America. There's a proper dinosaur. A Gugaceratops. Oh, mighty and majestic. Yeah, look at its like nose. This has got to be one of the most impressive animals that have ever lived. A giant pterosaur flying through the sky, swooping down upon its prey. And this here is the Dinosuchus, the giant crocodiles that lived here at Big Bend. So the pavilion down here with fossils was really impressive. There was more in there than I thought there would be. And it was really interesting to learn about how this area has changed over the years, over the millions of years, from being entirely underwater to being like a jungle, to being like it is now. We've walked up the hill, and I thought we would find fossils on this way up here, but no, not that. Just a nice view. Just however show us 
that the entire like Chisos Basin Mountain used to be a major volcano. The whole thing was one big old mountain. That's really big. I would not want to be here when it erupted. Nah. Nah, man. Nah, man. Although you would get to see these animals, so that's tempting. <laughs> What the heck is that? It's like a lemur dog. I want a lemur dog. Here is an overlook of the Santa Elena Canyon. Quite possibly the most dramatic land border between the United States and another country. The wall to the right is the U.S. and everything on the other side of the river is Mexico. We're hiking into the canyon. We'd rather not be hiking because it's like 3 in the afternoon and oh, it feels hot. It's like 85 to 90. So not deadly hot, but more hot than we would like. But we can't resist hiking into this canyon. Look at that view. Just to give you the full honest picture, it's not exactly an easy trail the whole way. Had to traverse through some mud, and we gotta get up this steep bank. There she blows, the beautiful Santa Elena Canyon. And this is as far as we're hiking in because we are dying of heat. And the sun's about to peek out from behind that wall. Oof. Look at how red in the face all this is. We called it a day in Big Bend, but we'll be back tomorrow for one more day. And now we are recharging back in the town of Terralingua at our favorite place in town, Taqueria El Milagro. This is our second time here, two nights in a row. And this is why. Yum. Tacos. Salsas. More tacos. Chips and guac, which what, disappeared quickly. What's left of that, yeah? Yep. Mexican Coke. We are happy campers. I'm gonna get some of this hot one. And I'm gonna go for it. Come to Papa. Mm. Mm. This is my happy place. I'd like to just take a moment to point out this big old mountain right by Terralingua. Those are all massive volcanic basalt columns. Super cool. They look just like other basalt columns you'd see like at Devil's Tower, but they're red. You know, more of a Texan flair, which I like. Really, I just like the salt columns. Love them from the bottom of my heart. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Behold, the old Terralingua Cemetery. It is really something. Something to see. I'll just walk around a minute to give you an idea. People leave all sorts of stuff here as sort of tributes for the dead. Money, candy, beads, candles, alcohol. Here's somebody who got a lot of beer bottles as tributes from his drinking buddies, I assume. Yeah, it's quite something. This person's got a dinosaur on their grave. Not many people can say that. <laughs> 
Something tells me alcohol may have played a role in this person's death. Look how cool some of these graves are. I mean, there's really old ones from the early 1900s when this was a mercury mining town. And there's very recent ones. Because although this is, they call this a historic ghost town, it is also a lived-in town. It's not just a ghost town. Hence, you know, we're staying in this town. It's, it's just cool to imagine uh, a different time here in the Wild West. No running water, no electricity when they first started this town. Just a bunch of miners scraping out an existence in the desert. And I imagine some of them died in gunfights and stuff like that or mining accidents. Uh, yeah, they're just really cool old graves. It's another early morning in Big Bend National Park. We're here at the Krakadon to hike to Balanced Rock. It was about a six mile drive on a okay dirt road to get here. Our Honda Civic made it okay, but it was a little rough. And it is a 2.2 mile round trip hike to see one of the most iconic rock formations in Big Bend. And we are being treated to a lovely sunrise. Yeah, baby. Here comes the last little bit of the trail. And it's a little steeper and rockier. Still not too bad. Behold, the balanced rock in Big Bend, deep in the heart of Texas. Awesome. Look at that. Not too shabby. That's gorgeous. Gorgeous. That made for an excellent morning hike. We're not too sweaty or too ruined. Uh, it really would be a very hot, sunny hike with really no shade if you did this in the middle of the day. So try to avoid that, obviously. They do say to stay off the trail after noon. Like, get off the trail before noon. And now we're almost done with all the things we've intended to see in Big Bend. Although, there's one more area we haven't been to, which is the uh, Rio Grande Village, where we're going to do the Boquillas Crossing. See you there. We've made it down to the southeast portion of the park by the Rio Grande River. And we're hiking to see the Boquillas Canyon. Bit of an uphill climb at the beginning, but overall it should be uh, not that bad. It said 1.4 miles round trip and only like a hundred and hundred feet of elevation gain. Yeah, nothing to it. Piece of cake. Trace leches cake. Getting epic. Wow, here we are at the mouth of the canyon. And this was a lot easier to reach than the Santa Elena Canyon by like a hundredfold. Well, this is lovely. It's giving me vibes of like Zion or one of those canyons that we have in Utah. It's like home. Well, this seems to be the end of the trail, but not the end of the canyon. Quite magnificent. If you want to make an illegal border crossing to Mexico, this is the place to make a swim for it. One last good look at this Grand Rio. Fun fact, 
Quite a bit of bamboo grows along this river. That, to me, was surprising, but I guess it's normal. We saw it also at Santa Elena Canyon yesterday. Anyway, pretty short, simple hike. Very worth it. A lot easier than getting back into Santa Elena Canyon. And uh, with that, uh, the last thing we intend to do here in the National Park is take the ferry at Boquillas Crossing into the town of Boquillas del Carmen, Mexico. I even wore my Mexico shirt. Look at that. Here it is, folks, the river crossing to Mexico. Here's our ride. about that, Melissa? That's pretty cool. Riding to Mexico on the back of a donkey. That's classy. I like it. Yeah, for years live in Boquillas. This is family. Yeah. How many people live in Boquillas? Uh, 215 maybe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, Hola. Thank no you. gracias. Oh, watch out. Look at her go. World's fastest salesman. Yep. This is it. It's kind of a fun little town to see. Oh, this is your mother's shop? Oh, very nice, very nice. Well, we're sitting down to eat some lunch in Bohia. I'm pretty impressed with the uh, premises here, the views. And of course, we've got some cold soda to quench our thirst. Mm -hmm. Very lovely. Here, I'll show you the view. Wow, look at this place. It's legit. There you have El Rio Grande, of course. Tejas on the other side. Everything over here is Mexico. Lunch is served. And we're in heaven. Mexican heaven. Just like that, we're headed back home to America. Yeehaw! <laughs> go, go! <laughs> Uh, just in case this isn't obvious, if you're wanting to go to Boquillas while you're here in Big Bend, you gotta bring your documents. Yeah, bring your passports. Yep, and uh, definitely bring cash. We brought a hundred dollars in cash across the river, mm -hmm. and we're bringing back like 19. We bought this cool souvenir for 10 yeah, bucks. Really pretty. Uh, the donkey ride is five dollars, uh, sorry, ten dollars a person. The ferry ride is five dollars a person. Person round trip and uh, you also pay three dollars just for an uh, entrance fee when you get over there yeah. what else we spent thirty dollars on lunch for the two of us so it can add up quickly and they don't have atms over there and uh many places just want cash yep just got to bring what you need yep. overall a pretty memorable adventure can't say i've ever ridden on a donkey before mm -hmm. let alone uh, crossed into another country via rowboat. <laughs> well, now we have a little extra time left in the day. So we've come back to the Chisos Basin, my personal favorite section of the Big Bend National Park. And we're doing a short, easy little walk to the window view. <laughs> What is the window, you may be wondering? I don't really know yet. There's some pretty cacti. Look but don't touch. Pretty mountains. So that must be the window. This is 
The little gap is between the mountains? Yeah, I think so. It's a little window into the next valley over? We are. End of the trail. Lovely window behind us. It's a pretty nice scenic view. And uh, they say it's really good for sunset. And now as we conclude our time here in Big Bend National Park, I thought we'd get our final thoughts out of our system about both of Texas's national parks, Guadalupe Mountains and Big Bend. Both worth visiting. Um, Big Bend obviously is the better of the two. It's just bigger, more variety. At least to me it's obvious. I think, yeah. I think it's fairly obvious yeah. to anyone. Yeah, bigger area. You've got the desert. You've got the river with the magnificent canyons. You've got the mountains. The sweet mountains here in the Chisos Basin. Yeah. And you have the beautiful desert which you can see balanced rock or the fossil exhibit. Um, it's great. Yeah, so plenty to do. I feel like two days was a great amount of time. And in terms of Guadalupe Mountains, the less popular Texan National Park? I think it's a beautiful park. I think it's worth your time. I think we were really fortunate to see it at a different time, uh, namely the fall with all the colors. Yeah, it was very nice. Um, we went in with low expectations. Yeah. It is, I think, like the least visited national park wow. in the contiguous 48 states. Yeah. Anyway, Western Texas. It's cool. Mexican food is pretty sweet. We're impressed by the, the cuisine. <laughs> We're impressed by the scenery. This is not what you think of, at least in our experience, when you think of Texas. And so... Thank you, Western Texas, for challenging our yeah. view of what this state looks like. Yeah, it's been a good trip. <laughs> Next up is Petrified Forest National Park in Arizona on our way home. Let's see how it goes.